So it can basically explain like the ethos of your third window to the people that are not familiar with the, your company. All right. Um, well, I started my company around four years ago after leaving Tartan Films. And I started it with the goal to bring various types of Japanese, a, uh, Korean, Hong Kong, all sorts of East Asian cinema to the UK, but without exploiting the market as had been done before by other companies through films like Long Haired Ghost or Action or other genre films. I wanted to do the full spectrum, dramas, comedies, musical comedies, even an action or two thrown in if I thought it was good enough. And really, oh, it's a bit silly, this third window, the window to the east is, I didn't actually, somebody else said that and I thought that was a good idea. It sounds very silly, doesn't it? But do that as a window to films from the east that would change people's perception of what a East Asian cinema was. You mentioned that you worked for Tartan Films. Mm. Um, why did you leave such an established um, company at such a young age like, to set up your own one? It's a bit of a risk at, uh, being so young. Yeah, I mean, when I started at Tartan, I was under this impression that companies like Tartan were the savior of foreign cinema. And initially, I thought so because of one of their film buyers, an acquisitions head called Patricia Raelli, who was a fantastic uh, buyer of films that were both commercial but also really had a lot of substance. I believe she bought films like Infernal Affairs and the such. But after she left, Tartan was complicated in the fact that the boss was a little more preoccupied with the social aspect of it all rather than the film or he became so after many years. And they were buying a lot more films to make money or to capitalize on what they'd already set up. And a lot of the times they didn't watch the films, they bought off trailers and these things really shouldn't be done. And a lot of companies do this, you know, I'm, I'm very you know, disheartened to say, but they buy, they pre-buy films before they're even made or they look at a trailer and say, oh, that's great. But to be honest, especially in Korean cinema, which was popular at the time, anybody can cut a good trailer. And Korean films have fantastic production value, so with that, it's not hard to get three minutes out of it to entice a seller into, entice a buyer into a film. So I really wanted to leave this. I kept on suggesting films to them that I thought would fit into their Asia extreme genre. I suggested films like Cairo, Pulse, which is Kyoshi Kurosawa film. And I thought it's perfect because it's a fantastic film. This is one example, and it fits into their extreme line. But after Patricia left, Patricia was great because she would always be able to supersede Hamish and say, oh, you must buy this. But it ended up being a thing where there was no balance. So if Hamish didn't like it or if it wasn't his idea, then it wouldn't be chosen. So. And it was a pity because all the people that worked there were film enthusiasts and especially their buyer afterwards, Jane Giles, who's now at the BFI. And she loved cinema, but she would buy films and I would say, well, why are you buying this? And she goes, well, it will make money. But you, all right, we do need to make money, but they, there are enough films out there from Asia that are both good and fit into the categories that they wanted with the Asia Extreme. And there's tons of fantastic Asia Extreme titles but they were just getting too caught up with sales companies just selling them easily and not really paying enough attention. With that, it sort of brought the market down. I thought, well, I should try and do something different. Um, you mentioned that you, brought, um, you recently brought Love Exposure into the UK. Um, how do you feel that Western audiences will receive um, a four-hour film about religion, sex, and top-of-the-skirt shots? Yeah, I mean, Love Exposure was a very complicated thing. Actually, it's a six, it was a six-hour film, but the four hours is the shorter cut. Um, that I first saw it, uh, I think around October 2000, what year are we now? So eight, October 2008. And it didn't play in Berlin until, I think, I think February 2009. And I really wanted this film, but at the time, you know, 
every, nobody would, would even, because there was nothing behind it to give it a little push, there was no chance. And then unfortunately, when it won at Berlin, the sales agents wanted a lot of money, so it was quite hard for me to get. But they came to realize after time that nobody wanted to buy it, which is unfortunate because I think it's one of those films that people are put off initially when you tell them. But when they see it, then they realize, as critics in the UK have done, that it is actually a very good film. I mean, come on, what four-hour films? The Postman with Kevin Costner, that's three and a bit hours. And you're not telling me that The Postman is anywhere near. I know The Postman didn't do terribly well, but it made quite a decent amount. Of, enough people saw it. And I think with the help of it winning in Berlin and starting to get a lot of cult status around festivals, that people started picking up, talking about it, and through that, maybe not watching it in a cinema, but the DVD sales, I think, will be quite good. Have I answered your question? I think. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> I, sorry, I go on tangents. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think, I think the DVD sales will be quite strong for it because four hours is quite a hard time to sit in a cinema, though it is a fantastic cinematic experience, but DVD sales, watching it at home, you can take toilet breaks and all this, no problem. So I, I, I'll report back to you okay. in six months. <laughs> Numbers. Um, the film we just watched, Here Are a Few People Are Alive, um, is by a female director. Um, there's been a recent rise in the female directors in like, female cinema. Do you reckon the female director as a rarity um, is like uh, a thing of the past? Do you reckon women are finally coming to their own in the male-dominated film industry? Well, I'd say it's a lot harder in Japan than in the U.S. I think in the U.S. a lot of politics are involved. Um, for example, let's look at when DreamWorks started and they handed Mimi Leda, Leda or Leda, uh, the Peacemaker, and she had never done such an action film. She was a director of TV shows like ER. And occasionally, female directors are given chances where I'm not saying this is a sort of affirmative action thing, but allows them to get their foot in the door and make films. Sometimes they're making a lot of action films. But obviously, we have people like Catherine Bigelow, who's a fantastic female director of action films. That's one part. In other parts, I don't think in the West it's that much of a problem for a female director as it used to be. I think it's becoming a lot more able, especially because of high-definition filmmaking and things nowadays that people can make films cheaper, therefore allowing more people, women or men, to make films. With Kakera, the thing is, is that Momoko Ando is... She comes from a qu quite prestigious family in terms of cinema, father and mother well-known in cinema and sister as well. And she's been more bred, so she's been created, in essence, by a management agency to use her being a woman as a way to get ahead, to stick out. When if you talk to Momoko Ando, I remember there was a screening of this once and somebody in the audience said, is this a feminist film? As you would expect somebody after watching a film like this to question. And Momoko was saying, no, not in the least. And actually the woman in the audience got quite annoyed by it, saying, what, well, you don't like feminists, do you? Or something silly like this. I think that uh, what I was trying to say with that is that sometimes female directors need to be branded as feminist directors. And in this case, they can just do make films as women, as the case with people like Catherine Bigelow and all that. And it's, it's, it's better if they're allowed to do that than be branded as always, it seems to be female director, therefore feminist director. Mm -hmm. I think um, what, I, what I would ask in relation to that film, does it, would it bother you, well, not bother you, but I mean, I could see that film being picked up very, very quickly by, femi particularly, let's say, feminist academics will pick that film up yeah. uh, and champion it, I've, I've known that, and champion the director now as a, you know, I mean, I know the connection to Sophia uh, Coppola mm. has, has already been branded, but it seems to me, I don't know what, what you think, Abby, that's a very different...